President Wavell Ramkalawan was born on Mahi, the principal island of the Republic of Seychelles. He has a strong understanding of the inextricable link between humanity and the ocean and is one of the leading voices from big ocean states for protecting the ocean. Seychelles is proud to be the first African country to host such an important uh, summit. And of course, for us, uh, this is also recognition, as has been said before by previous speakers, of the role that Seychelles attaches to the protection of the ocean, to working towards mitigating climate change. And uh, as an island developing state, or rather as an oceanic state, we know what we say when we're talking about protecting the oceans, when we're talking about protecting the environment, protecting our planet. It's not just theory for us, but it's reality. I love the description of the ocean race on the internet. You type the ocean race, and uh, the definition is, the ocean race is the world's toughest sailing event, where the elite of the sailing profession battle it out on the most treacherous oceans. But for me, what is important in that description is it is the toughest test in team sports. And this means pulling together. And uh, as we follow the ocean race, to see all those men and women battle it out in the oceans, and as you mentioned, Richard, sometimes in, in winds of uh, 30 to 40 knots, how they have to move from one side of the, of the yacht to the other, from the bow to the stern, from port to, to starboard, etc. It's the team spirit pulling together. And here I am reminded of uh, the great Mze Jumo Kenyatta, whose motto was Harambe, let's pull together. And, uh, this is what it's all about. It's about pulling together and pulling together so that we can ensure our mere existence. Ambassador Thompson clearly stated that after the human race, depending on how we behave, after we've gone, the oceans will still be there. So now it's a question of sustaining our mere existence. Sustaining this planet, this one planet, and uh, as everyone talks about today, we're not talking about a planet B. There's no planet B. <laughs> yes, they're trying to find out whether there's life on planet Mars, but uh, we know that Earth is our planet. It is the planet, and the survival of this planet depends on each one of us pulling together exactly as the participants, the crew in the ocean race do it. So we have no option. It is teamwork that will ensure the survival of our planet. And uh, in Brest, we talked about the one ocean. I love that theme, one ocean. Because for too many years, we've been talking about various oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic. But now, we realize that we've got to talk about this one ocean. The 70% of the seas that cover the planet. What happens wherever, in whichever part of the world concerns every one of us? And when we look at the ocean, it's not the Indian Ocean, it's the one ocean that we're looking at. We're looking at part of the, uh, as the waters merge and, uh, and uh, as the fish 
The fish don't have any territories. The fish move from one part of the ocean to the other. And this is our one ocean. And therefore, preserving it is so important. I'm all excited about, uh, about uh, the various summits that are being held. In Brest, as you say, there was this commitment how we should all come together, how we should all be concerned about the preservation of our, of our planet, of our oceans. And yes, I'm all excited because I see so much encouragement. I see so many young people who are leading us, so many young people who are saying to us, leaders, you have to preserve this planet not only for us who are growing up, but also for future generations. And this is where I stand. I support the young people. I support them when they look at leaders in their faces and tell them what they truly think. Sometimes leaders think of those young people as being arrogant. But no, there's no arrogance. It is the sincerity. It is even the fear that is being expressed by those young people because they don't know what tomorrow will give. And I'm concerned. I'm worried when I hear that all the corals in, the, in, in our part of the world will, will disappear, will go through bleaching, and we won't have corals. I'm worried because I know what we went through some years ago and how the fish disappeared. And I'm concerned because it's not everybody who's pulling together. And here I can share with you only, I mean, right now, I mean, uh, we have a couple, of, uh, a couple of fishing vessels with gill nets that spread for miles and miles that have been fishing illegally in our waters. They've been catching dolphins, they've been catching everything. And we know the, the dangers of gill nets and, and all this is part of the process of destroying our ocean. When those people, when tourists who come here and they see the big grouper and they say, I want that grouper, they don't know what they're doing to the, to the corals. Removing this grouper means you are destroying the habitat around this coral. And so we go back to preservation. But I would like to pay special tribute to our women here in Seychelles, especially. We have so many women who are involved in the conservation of our planet. We have in the, in, in the hall our own Afiza, Talma. Thank you very much for all that you show us. We have other young women. When I visit Aldebra, I see those young Seychellois women who are all excited about the conservation of, uh, of the atoll. And of course, Seychelles has given this atoll to the world. This is a gift that we've given to the world. And we're saying, let's preserve it together. Let's conserve it together. But when you see what is happening there, Ambassador Thompson, I'd like to take you to Aldebra and you'll see the plastic that we are not responsible for. Aldebra doesn't have a plastic factory. Aldebra doesn't have a port. Aldebra has less than 15 people living on that at all. But our young people remove tons and tons of plastic coming from other parts of the world. And yes, we are committed, but this is where, again, the call for Harambe, let's pull together, comes back to life because what happens in, I mean, in, in fact, this is becoming even, uh, even more true, that it is indeed a global village and uh, don't know whether to call it a global ocean because this is exactly what it is. What happens in one part of the ocean affects other parts of, the, of, of that same ocean. So women, young women, scientists, Seychellois, and, uh, and uh, visitors and, and foreigners, I want to say thank you very much.
for your devotion. You are truly leaders and you are visionaries in how we should all preserve our planet and in the way we move forward. Helena, I know the work that you do, the heart that you put in, the, in, in, in whatever you are called upon to do. So thank you very much. And I want us to applaud our women leaders who are showing the way forward. Yes, Seychelles lives the reality daily. And uh, former President Four and myself and other leaders of this uh, small island state who visit uh, the outer islands, who have seen how the destruction is affecting us. To the north, Dennis Island, Bird Island, we see the coastal erosion. To the east, to Koei TV, the same thing. To the south, towards uh, Farqua, and to the west, Aldebra, Assumption, we see how our islands are changing shapes. We see how the sand dunes are being eroded and the trees are falling. And we know very well what will be the next step. When those dunes go, the ocean will reclaim the sand. And by reclaiming the sand, these islands will be no more. We see that. We know what is happening. And therefore, this is why Seychelles, small as we are, we are punching above our weight. On the global scene, we make our voices heard. The work that Ambassador, Ambassador Ronnie Jimot did with the SIDS, trying to make people understand that it's not just theory for us. It's not just about uh, getting a doctorate, but it's about our very existence. So Seychelles, yes, Seychelles is punching above its weight. And uh, I'd like to thank the Danny Four Foundation for co-hosting this uh, summit. This is what we are doing. We are mindful of our very existence. So brothers and sisters, yes, here we are, small Seychelles, small as we are, small as it gets, protecting over 30% of our ocean, protecting 50% of our landmass, which again, we don't have much, we have 459 square kilometers, but out of that 50% of the land mass is, is under conservation. We are protecting 100% of our mangroves, the seagrass, 100%. We're doing all that not because we want to get a gold medal. We're doing that because we are committed to protecting the ocean. We are 100% we are committed in saving our planet. And uh, when I mention this in, uh, in international summits, conferences, when I say the area, and uh, I like the, the, the speech of the Secretary General of the Indian Ocean Commission, Seychelles and Mauritius are jointly managing the area of Saya Dumala. And uh, the seagrass meadow of Saya Dumala is bigger than Switzerland. Bigger than Switzerland. And we all know that seagrass removes more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than trees. So this is what our contribution is all about. We want to go further. And we are now pleading to, to the UN to say, don't, don't give us just the protection of the seabed and what, goes, what is underneath the seabed, but also allow us to manage the sea column so that we can, we can do much better. And this is what Seychelles is doing. At, at UNESCO, I was talking to the Secretary General and we're saying, for Aldebra, which we've already given to, to, to the world, we now want Aldebra to get another status, the biosphere status, because this is what we want to contribute. 
But small as we are, small as, as it gets, we cannot do it alone. We need the world. And COP26, we heard so many commitments. The EU AU summit in Brussels, we heard of the global gateway, 150 billion. And sometimes, I must say, the funding <laughs> doesn't really happen. And so we want the world to also follow us, to accompany us, and to put the commitment to transform the, the commitment into reality so that the contributions that we are making can be further enhanced. Ocean management depends on every one of us. We are as strong as the weakest link in the chain. Seychelles places itself as a strong link. From Victoria, we ask the world to join us in saving our ocean and in saving our planet. I thank you.